If all black women started a self-love journey, we could heal generations. Black women, did you know you can heal? Did you know you can feel? Did you know you can cry and completely surrender to the tears that are falling out of your eyes? Did you know that the trauma and pain that you've experienced isn't essentially normal, it's just been normalized? Did you know you don't always have to be strong, push through and carry on, but most importantly, did you know that you are not alone? Because I didn't. I didn't know it was okay to not be okay. I didn't know I can cry and be vulnerable and neither of them makes me weak. I didn't know I didn't have to always have it together. I didn't always have to have my life together, know what I was doing. I didn't know I can go to church and therapy at the same time. I worried that if I did this, that the strong black woman trophy would be taken away from me. But does it even belong to me? See, I didn't know that the strong black woman is the healed black woman but I do now. Growing up, I looked up to the women in my family. They were like superheroes to me. They were beautiful, independent, and strong. When I grew up, I wanted to be just like them. I wanted to be a strong black woman. The whole idea of the strong black woman seemed like a character in a folk tale to me. She was the unspoken rule the requirement, the expectation. She wasn't personified just into one woman. She seemed all too familiar to me, almost as if she was family. Her mannerisms echoed the pain and trauma of her ancestors, and her self-silencing behavior became almost second nature to me. The ways of a strong black woman was never directly taught to me. It was shown to me through the behavior and actions of my mothers, grandmothers, and family. The strong black woman trope hurts black women more than it helps them. It tells them that they should be strong and resilient, but doesn't allow them to engage in the behaviors needed to preserve their strength and resilience. If all black women started a self-love journey, we could heal generations. You may be thinking to yourself, how can something so simple as self-love have the potential to heal black women and possibly even their culture? Well, the answer to that actually lies within the definition itself. Dr. Autumn Griffin defined self-love as the will to protect, nurture, preserve, and celebrate one's emotional, physical, spiritual, and mental health. Self-love goes against all that the strong black woman is supposed to be. Where the strong black woman trope says to be selfless, self-love says to be selfish. Where the strong black woman trope says show no emotion, self-love says explore them. And where the strong black woman trope says, we don't have time for mental health. Self-love says, make time. Self-love follows the hierarchy of cognition. Reconstructing our thoughts will then influence the way that we feel, which will then influence the way that we behave. And eventually, that will change the way that we treat ourselves. For black women, this is essentially simple. Because the only thing that the strong black woman is allowed to be is strong. She's expected to push things under the rug, hide her trauma, suffer in silence. So this isn't simple. There's so much that we have to learn and so much more that we have to unlearn. But lucky for us, self-love is a skill. And with enough practice, it can become a learned behavior. And if mastered, it could be the one missing preventative measure to fight against common mental health issues within the black community. No longer do we need to suffer in silence with our mental health and traumas. We can begin to heal them. Self-love teaches us how to protect our mental health. 
It also teaches us how to preserve it. Imagine if we all did this. Imagine the change it will cause. Self-love has the power to change our culture. Because as our daughters watch us learn how to heal, they will learn as well. And eventually, it will be normalized as it is repeated into our culture. Because what is culture if not behaviors passed down from generation to generation? It will be passed down from her daughters to her daughter's daughters to her sisters to her grandmas until it is eventually taken and adopted as culture the same way the strong black woman trope that silenced us for years has. We could finally fight against the common mental health issues that black women face by healing the trauma that has been silenced by the strong black woman trope. It's almost as if every time I try to be anything but resilient, I hear the strong black woman, almost like an elder, whispering to me, if I can make it through slavery, then you can make it through anything. So hush it up, suck it up, push through, pull it together. People are depending on you. Carry on. I listen as she silences and invalidates me. If all black women started a self-love journey, we could heal generations. I would like to share with you my journey. But first, hi, my name is Denise. I am the founder and CEO of the Self-Love Organization, a wellness club for women of color to prioritize self-love and mental health, to finally end the cycle of transgenerational trauma. I have been on my self-love journey for 10 years, but my story starts at age nine. I'm at my grandmother's house. All the lights are off downstairs except for one ambered light. We're all in the living room, and in that room stands my mother, father, grandparents, and me. And for a reason I am way too young to understand, everyone is screaming. Everyone is upset. Jamaican Patwa is being flown around the room at a speed that I cannot comprehend. I try to keep up looking left and right. My head begins to feel like it's spinning. My heart is pounding. My palms are sweaty. I feel weak and tense all at the same time. Their, their thoughts are echoing in my mind. I close my eyes. And by the time I can open it, I've ran into the bathroom, sitting on the bathroom floor, next to the cold sink. The draft from underneath the door is brushing against my bare feet and tears are running down in my nightgown and my hands are over my ears. And all I remember is myself repeating and asking myself, what did I do wrong? What, what could I have possibly done? The funny part is I'm pretty sure it had nothing to do with me. But that overwhelming feeling was there. And it was in that moment that my self-silencing behaviors began. In that moment, a nine-year-old crying, clearly in distress girl decided to be a strong black woman. I've never seen any of the women in my family cry. No one has ever acted like this before. Something must be wrong with me. So that's what I did. As I started to hear the footsteps of my family coming towards the bathroom door, I quickly wiped off my tears and dried my eyes. And when the door opened, I put on a show. Denise, are you okay? They asked. I replied, you guys were just being too loud. I lied. I knew something was off, I knew something was wrong, but I never brought it up again and neither did they. It just got pushed underneath the rug. Fast forward, I'm in my prime years of 18. And I just decided to start my self-love journey. Now, this was 10 years ago. I thought self-love was what the media portrayed it to be. Fancy robes, face masks, 
maybe painting my nails and toes. I was sitting in my favorite class as a freshman at the City College of New York, Intro to Psychology. And as I'm taking my notes and I'm looking up and down at the board, I looked up for the next slide and at the top, written in bold, big font, it read, anxiety. And as my professor began to explain and share with us the symptoms of this disorder, I started to feel a pit in my stomach, a hole in my chest. I started to sink inside of my seat and I felt like everyone was looking at me. He had to have been talking about me. And in that moment, I realized all of three things. One, when I ran into that bathroom at nine years old, nine-year-old Denise was having an anxiety attack. Actually, I have been suffering from anxiety this whole time. And I never knew it because I continuously decided to push it under the rug, silence myself just so that I can hold that strong black woman trophy. That overwhelming feeling continued to visit me, but I never addressed it. Two, I realized that if I experienced this at nine, and I'm now figuring about it now, how many more things have I silenced, and for how long? Three, I realized that whatever I've been doing on my self-love journey with these fancy masks and robes isn't working. And if I wanted to see real change, that hierarchy of self-love, change in my behavior, changing my feelings, changing my thoughts, I had to do the external, I had to leave the external work and do the internal work. There was a crying young nine-year-old black child hidden inside a bathroom for years, trying to tell me something was wrong, but I continuously decided to push her away so that I can push through, carry on, pull it together. It was in that moment that I realized the gap in between self-love and mental health. The two seem to be two separate journeys, but they actually are the same. They hold the same weight. Each one reflects the other. It was in this moment that I realized that if I needed to actually heal, I had to do the work. And to do the work meant that maybe it was time for me to start to look into my emotions and learn who they are. And I did this through self-therapy. What lies in between self-love and mental health is self-therapy. And it is in that space that you begin to form healthy relationships with your emotions to actually start speaking to that crying inner child. To learn who is this anxiety? Why is she here? What does she need? And how can I help her? It was in that moment I realized that this whole time I have been coping and not healing. Black women could use self-love to help themselves heal through self-therapy by studying themselves, questioning themselves, and becoming so aware of themselves that when anxiety comes to visit, they know who she is. They know what she needs. They know how to heal her. I was able to use this method of self-love to self-therapy to reach mental health. Starting a self-love journey is the black woman's pathway to mental health. And honestly, after doing this journey for all of 10 years, I feel stronger than ever. Self-love is healing and there is power in healing. There is strength in healing. And I'm happy I know something today that I didn't know before that the strong black woman is the healed black woman. If all women started a self-love journey, we could heal generations. Thank you.